The Lord be with you. God's blessings to you all as our Easter celebrations continue. Will you please stand? Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You open wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end our shepherd and lamb, the honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Will the congregation please be seated. And I would like to invite any of our kids who are here to come forward for children's sermon today. Come on up. That's all right. This is good. I was, I'm going to need some help today. So this is perfect. Okay. So it's the second Sunday of Easter, of the Easter season, right? Because last Sunday was what? Easter. Oh, you guys are so smart. Last Sunday was Easter. And what did we celebrate on Easter? Yeah, what happened though? Was Jesus still on the cross last Easter? Yeah, what happened? Was he still in the tomb on Easter? He rose from the dead. And this Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, we always hear the story about the disciple named Thomas. How many of you have heard this story before? Maybe, maybe. Lyndon, what do you know about Thomas? Yeah, yeah, Miles. You must be a pastor's kid. (laughs) Absolutely, yes. So Thomas was a disciple someone who followed Jesus. And all of the other disciples were gathered in the house on the morning of Easter. And Jesus appeared to them, everybody except for Thomas, and said, peace be with you. He said that twice and showed them that he was alive. And then Thomas didn't get to see it, right? And so Thomas said, unless I see for myself, I don't know if I can believe it. He doubted a little bit, right? Right, and so, oh, you guys are so smart. You make my job so easy. 
after this, after a whole week, Thomas was still like, I don't know. I don't think Jesus is really alive. I don't think so. But then Jesus came to Thomas and said, peace be with you. So Jesus said, peace be with you three times. And that if God sends Jesus, God also sends us. And then Thomas believed, right? Because he saw Jesus. So I have a question. How do you see Jesus in the world? I know I've asked you this question before, but I'm asking it. Lyndon. Everywhere? Yes. Miles? In school and everywhere? When you see the cross? Anyone else? Yeah, Eliana. At church, yeah. Where else do you see Jesus? Yes. In your house? I see Jesus in other people. Linda. In the sun, too. Yeah, I see Jesus in other people, right? I see Jesus when I look at all of you and our reminders to let each other have peace, right? Peace be with you, because that's what Jesus said. And that God loves us, and God sends us to go and to share that peace with others, right? And to share God's love with everybody. So um, we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to do a quick prayer, and then I have a job for you. So um, we're going to pray, and then I want you to stand up and face the choir, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you instructions after that. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us your peace. Help us remember that you are with us always. Amen. Okay, stand up, face the choir, and you are going to say as loud as you can, peace be with you, Jesus loves you. Go! Peace be with you, Jesus loves you. Okay, now turn around. We're going to do it to this side of the church. Ready? Go. Okay, now this side. Peace be with you. Jesus loves you. Yes! Three times, just like Jesus, right? So now congregation members, I'm going to challenge you to do the same thing. Share that peace with at least three people today because we have that chance in church, right, to share the peace. So make sure you do that, just like Jesus. All right, thanks for coming up. You guys can head back to your seats. Today's first reading is from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, beginning with verse 32. If you'd like to follow along, please turn to page 995 in your pew Bibles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Today's second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. If you'd like to follow along, please turn to page 1110 in your pew Bibles. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. 
This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked because they were afraid, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they had seen the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But the disciple Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not yet seen and have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Nine days ago on Good Friday, we heard the story of Jesus' death. His pain, his wounds, his disciples' betrayal, denial, and desertion. We heard about the brokenness of Jesus' story. And then last week on Easter, we heard the story of the resurrection, that Jesus rises from the dead and we give thanks that God has defeated the power of death. And now with today's gospel story, we are returned to the fear and the wounds. The disciples who are locked away in fear and Jesus appears to them with a still broken body. 
wounds and all. From brokenness to new life to brokenness. It's a pattern that I think we often encounter in our lives, isn't it? At the center is always God's promise of resurrection and new life, but it so often comes to us when pain and woundedness are close beside. And that's not meant to be dismal. After all, what's the point of resurrection if it's not spoken into a world of pain? Why would we still need the resurrection if everything was perfect all the time? Still, perhaps, we'd rather hear a different gospel today, maybe. One that erases Christ's wounds, and while we're at it, the wounds of the world, rather than the one that we get. The one where Christ's wounds remain as a stark reminder that our wounds remain too. In fact, I love this story, and I love the fact that it draws attention to these lasting wounds that Jesus has, precisely because it draws attention to the lastingness of our own wounds. That is, the things we can't seem to shake or let go of, the things that hang on to our hearts, whether we are consciously aware of them or not. In a word, our baggage. Even in the face of new life and Easter joy, this story draws our attention here, giving us an opportunity to face those things that would hold us back from living into that new life. And one of the ways that baggage and past woundedness can hold us back from fully embracing new life is how it can negatively affect our view of the world. Like maybe we view others with skepticism or a lack of trust or maybe assume the worst of people as an act of self-protection. Our wounds cause us to view the world with a furrowed brow and always on the defensive. And while it might seem like a safer approach to life, always on guard for someone to disappoint us, it's also perhaps the best way to miss out on living into the new life that Christ promises. I'm reminded that in her book, Rising Strong, Brene Brown recalls an encounter with a woman who has no regard for rules. And this woman laughs at people who do. Brene is so infuriated by this encounter that she talks to her therapist about it, who suggests that people are maybe really doing the best that they can. And this infuriates her even more. How ridiculous is this, she thinks. She storms off to the bank where she watches the woman in front of her in line yelling at the bank teller, a young African-American man saying, who, and this woman says, I didn't make these withdrawals. I want to see the manager. And when he points to his manager, who is another man who is black, the woman says, no, I want a different manager. And Brene immediately chalks this woman's behavior up to racism. So when it's her turn to talk to the teller, she asks the man point blank, do you think that people are doing the best that they can? And he smiles, and he asked if she just saw what happened. She says yes, and that it was obviously racism. This man shrugs and says, she's scared about her money. He goes on to say that he does think that people can do the best that they can, but the best that they can might not be very good at any given moment. He says, the thing is, you never know about people. That lady could have a kid who's an addict stealing money from her account, or a husband with Alzheimer's who's taking money and not even remembering. You just never know. People aren't themselves when they're scared, so it might be all that they can do. Now this makes me think about those disciples on that Easter night when they were locked in the upper room because they were so afraid that the same people who killed Jesus were going to come for them. And it makes me think of Thomas, who didn't have the benefit of seeing Jesus and receiving Jesus' peace. Thomas, who's maybe still very scared and stubborn and skeptical. And it makes me think of all the disciples who, just a few days earlier, had deserted their friend because they were scared of what was happening to them. 
People aren't themselves when they're scared, and it might be all that they can do. I think we've all been there, right? When we're doing all that we can do, but when all that we can do ends up hurting someone else. They don't just hang on to our hearts. They get packed tightly away in our emotional baggage and threaten to always make an appearance when we least expect it or desire it. People aren't themselves when they're scared. And yet, even though we've been there ourselves, how quick are we to label these disciples as doubters and deniers and deserters? How quick are we to label one another as liars or careless or thoughtless or incompetent or mean? Even though we know people aren't themselves when they're scared and they're probably just doing the best that they can under these circumstances. Now, Brene Brown continues to grapple with the question of whether or not people are doing the best that they can until she finally asks her husband this question. He doesn't answer right away, but when he does, he says, I don't know if they do or not. All I know is that my life is better when I assume that people are doing the best that they can. It keeps me out of judgment and lets me focus on what is and not what should or could be. And to me, this possibility that simply assuming that people are doing the best that they can, it feels like Jesus' breath of peace. Did you notice that Jesus says, peace be with you three times? Peace be with you in fear, in your disappointment, in your anxiety, in your uncertainty. Peace be with you when you are about to judge someone else for their failure or shortcoming. Peace be with you when your wounds or scars try to undermine Christ's invitation to join him in a new resurrection life. God's own love and grace bring that peace. And to prove a point, then, Christ invites Thomas and also us to touch his own wounds. And it becomes a poignant reminder that wounds can exist, whether still open and aching or long ago and scarred over, at the same time as peace. Our wounds and our scars and our pain and our brokenness do not have power over us, because even into these wounds, Christ breathes his peace. Maybe especially into these words, Christ breathes his peace. Peace be with you is not a word of grace to those who are already whole. It is grace to those who still seek healing, who are experiencing brokenness and pain. It is grace to those who long for new life. It is grace to those who carry with them all of the baggage of past mistakes, either of our own or of others that have made us hurt. It is grace and a gift. And it is also a call to bring that peace into the world and into its brokenness. It is a call to seek forgiveness and healing in relationships, to search for and embrace that which will bring peace to all the places in our lives and the world that need the peace of Christ. It is a call to bring a wounded world in need of healing, the promise of the resurrected Christ. Peace be with you. Amen.
Please join me for, with the words of the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 105 in the front of your red hymnals. Let us be bold in professing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us the peace of your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to the work for well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice and a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for those who cry out in grief, suffering, or pain. Especially today, we pray for Keith Barnes, Georgia Nelson, Judy Stelzig, the friends and family of Carol Bolson, and those who we name in our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Open our hearts to discern wherever God calls each of us to serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take some time to share God's peace with one another. All right, a few announcements before we continue with our worship. First, I want to make sure you take some time in your bulletins and note the details for the St. Olaf Continuing Ed Day. The Continuing Ed Day, of course, part of our uh, Senior Adult Ministries and the Caring Committee. There's a fantastic uh, morning of Continuing Ed planned, so take a look, um, get on your calendars, register as is appropriate, and make sure you are there for that. It's, the, the lineup is fantastic, so just be there for the whole thing. It's going to be great. Uh, two things uh, to uh, call you to action today. The first, as soon as we're done with worship, head out these doors. Don't turn down to go towards the fellowship hall, but go straight. You'll find a table uh, looking for volunteers to open doors on Sunday mornings. It's a very easy job. You get to smile. I think most of you can smile. You get to say good morning. Most of you can say good morning, and you get to uh, greet people as they come in. Most of you can do that, I think. If you are one of those, we need you to write your name down on these sheets of paper. Uh, hospitality is a big part of who we are at St. Olaf, so this is a great way to show hospitality on behalf of the church. So 
go see uh, Sally Wallstrom out at those tables and she'll answer any questions you may have. And lastly, today is the first uh, opportunity for our continuing ed uh, uh, series called Let's Talk. I'm wondering if any of you out there have ever uh, had the thought or said aloud something to the effect of our world is so polarized right now and there's so, there's so much conflict right now and if people would just talk then we might be a little bit better off. I think most of you have probably done that as well and if you have, go into the fellowship hall after you have signed up to open doors. See, I'm linking them all together now. It's very smooth. So you're going to go into the fellowship hall and participate in this program called Let's Talk. Pastor Madison and Peter Soley will be moderating this discussion. It's going to be a fantastic opportunity to model uh, dialogue uh, on polarizing issues. And today's topic, we're going to start off with the ever controversial, how to train a dog. It's going to be fantastic. I love where this is going. It's, it's going to be wonderful. So again, this is between services in the fellowship hall, so you can have your coffee, you can be in there. And we're going to work through this tricky topic and this tricky challenge of how to talk to each other in loving and constructive ways. So. That's what you need to do today. Sign up to open doors and smile and say good morning and then proceed to the fellowship hall to learn how to have good conversation with each other. It's going to be a wonderful way to round out your morning of faith formation. With that, we'll continue our worship, reflect on God's generosity and how we are or maybe are not stewarding that generosity. Here's a time of offering. Will you please stand? Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmists cried out for healing. And full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are breath, send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic. O oh God, most motherly. O oh God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take this bread and share this wine. In these, Christ comes to us with the abundant love from God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. These are the gifts of God for you. Please be seated.
Will you please stand? Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your, by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. And as these elements are sent out to those who cannot be with us, let us pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick and homebound. In your loving care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. People of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.